guys. Mike, your host of Crushing Your Fear. How are you doing today? Fears. I mean, I have fears every day. I think you probably do too. It depends on, you know, what you're thinking about. You could you could wake up like, oh my God. I try to settle myself down in the morning, like do some meditating and, and try to vision, you know, and then I feel better, go for a walk or do some exercise in the morning and then I'm 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 okay then. <laughs> But sometimes during the day, I'm like, holy cow, what, what's happening? You know, uh, and you have expectations and it doesn't happen. And you're like, geez, you know, so it's up and down. But you have to just kind of look at the fear for what it is. But with today, we have Mark Zalmanoff, and he is an Apex executive coach. Uh, he's also owner of Mark Z Fitness and uh, Nutrition. He has a, uh, you know, a gym in Frisco, Texas, and I met him through Apex, and um, great guy. I said, hey, come on, let's talk about uh, your fear, and uh, we'll, we'll try to give some people some value. And he said, sure, no problem. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, we had a great conversation, and here we go. All right, we have Mark Zalmanoff, and he's an Apex uh, executives coach. I, I met him through... Apex is Ryan Stuman's uh, group, and uh, he uh, founded Mark Z Fitness and Nutrition. He's also a coach um, for 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 a lot of people. And uh, how are you doing today, Mark? I am good, Michael. I am very good. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you coming on. You're in you're in Frisco, Texas. Yes, sir. Where everything is happening, a lot a lot of people going to to Texas. You know, a lot of people are just saying, "Gotta go." It smells like freedom down here, and that's uh, it's a big draw for a lot of people. <laughs> it is freedom, and the rest of the country's locked down, and it's just a horrible thing we need to get. I'm in New York, so it's just like the freaking 180 degree. You know, now they're loosening up. All of a sudden, they've just said, "Okay, well, you can open again." Like all of a sudden, everybody's like not prepared. They're like, "Whoa!" Like Broadway, they're like, "Okay, open," and they're like, "Hold on a second. We, you know, we were planning <laughs> to open is like in September, not now." Um, but you know, what, what are you going to do? I guess you'll take it. But, um, I wanted to get you on cause I know, you know, you had a lot of experiences in your life and you know, what I usually do is get with guests is just throw it back to them and kind of, they can discuss any, you know, fears that they've experienced in their life, how they've overcome them. You know, I know that you wanted to talk about also in your fitness, um, you know, area, there were some, some fears that you see in people. So I'll throw it back to you and, and maybe you can take us through. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. So I've been I've been coaching for 19 years, which is kind of crazy. Wow. Uh, when I think about how many people that I've had the honor of working with over that time, and you start to see similarities of behavior when you get people in the gym. And I've always felt that the gym is such a great it's a great place to see who people really are. You know, when, when you're when you're coming in the gym and it's five in the morning, six in the morning, it's still dark. You got crust in your eyes like that's a true human being right there. Nobody's polished. They don't have makeup on. You know, you get to see the the spirit of a, of a human being. And then when a physical challenge comes, you get to see what people are really made of. And I've been really fortunate to work with some amazing people who have that drive and work ethic that so many coaches love coaching because I don't necessarily have to motivate people to do anything. You know, they're there for accountability. They're there for expertise. They're there to not have to think about what they're doing and be just be told what to do. Um, but, but it's interesting to see some of the things that people actually are fearful of in the gym and one of those is box jumps. And for those of you who don't know what a box jump is, just imagine a 20 inch, 24 inch uh, plywood box that you have to jump on with two feet. And it, it always amazes me how many people are legitimately scared to jump on it. Now, I always try to figure out where, where the root of that fear is actually coming from. Some of it's, it's fear of injury. Um, you know, it can happen. I mean, most of my friends have, have scars on their shins from banging a plywood box and <laughs> busting a shin open or scraping the skin off. And I mean, it's, it's part of what happens, but you know what the, the fear really is, is it's just disbelief. It's the individual in front of me, not having the confidence 
that they're able to do that. It's the self doubt. It's the limiting beliefs that we hear about all the time. And, you know, the problem with that statement of limiting beliefs is it, it gets to be cliche because so many people are talking about it, but it's still very true and very present in the gym. I never ask anybody to do anything that I don't believe they're capable of doing. So if I'm asking a client to do a box jump, I'm fully confident that they can. Mm. And sometimes we just need that push. And again, you know, it's a safe environment. I'm not endangering anyone. But I think a lot of times in life, we, we need a push. We need somebody that also believes in us just enough for us to believe in ourselves to overcome that type of fear. Because, you know, Michael, as you know, I mean, it, most fear is, is unfounded. You know, it's, it's from learned experience. It's because something happened to someone else, but it has nothing to do with your inability, but then we absorb all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember hearing a long time ago, and, I, and this could be wrong, but we're only born with two fears and it's the fear of falling and the fear of loud noise. And those are evolutionary things that protect us. So if you're walking down the street and you hear a, a very loud explosion, it's probably in your best interest to figure out where it came from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, and so it could be a fire. It could be fun. It could be a parade. I don't know. But, you know, we, a, a loud sound notates something is going on that we should probably take note of. Yeah. The fear, the fear of falling is good because if we didn't fear falling and you're walking down the sidewalk and you trip and you had no fear and you just fell, obviously we could really hurt ourselves. You can hurt yourself. Yeah. So, you know, knowing that those are really the only two innate fears that we have, that means all the other stuff that we fear, you know, am I going to be able to pay rent next month? And, and, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to get this business to be successful? And where's my next meal coming from? Like all those things are learned behaviors that we picked up either from someone else around us or from our own experience. And then we just carry it with us like luggage forever. And, and it's really hard to get out of our own way and, and realize that most of the time that fear is not real at all. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, maybe the fear of falling is the, cause you, normally you don't really, you know, in everyday life, you don't jump like two feet onto a box. Like it doesn't happen. <laughs> like, you know, so when someone presents you with that, like, really, you want me to do this? Actually, you remember, I remember uh, Tim Grover, like in his first book. Um, you know, relentless when he used to coach, uh, you know, when, when the NBA players got hurt, like Kobe or, or Michael Jordan, like the last test to see if they're ready was to jump up onto a box, like what you're saying. And if they can do that and he saw it and if it was okay, then they were ready. But if they couldn't do it properly, he's like, you're not ready. Can't do it. Go back. <laughs> and he would work right. on them more. Um, but you you mentioned the coaching. I think it's important, you know, and I've gotten coaching here uh, in Apex as well. I mean, I don't, I came in and I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to move forward, right? And and I just jumped into executives. Like I, I have, I keep saying I have no business being there, but everybody tells me that's probably a good thing that <laughs> you're saying that to yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'm okay then. So but. You know, so I, and I and I got into Apex last end of last year, and I just kind of accelerated, and I'm like, I just got to do this. Screw it, I'm go, I'm doing it. And then I jumped in, but now I have a coach, uh, who's Jessica, who we had a call before, and then she's like, "Would you, did you do X, Y, and Z?" I'm like, "Well, I did, but it was kind of sporadic." She's like, "No, you can't. No, make a make a uh, a, a schedule, and tell me exactly what you're going to do when, and then send it to me within two days, <laughs> because it keeps yeah. me accountable." to do it right because I, I didn't see, I don't see my business moving as far as much as I want. She's like, well, did you do X, Y, Z? I'm like, well, not exactly. She's like, no, that's not good. So you need a coach to kind of get you through uh, these, uh, these times. And, and, and that's the only way you're going to move forward, you know, sometimes. You know, something, something interesting that I see sometimes that when you get around a lot of high performing people, and you feel like you're kind of the low man on the totem pole. Mm. Sometimes you know, people talk about the fear of failure a lot, but I think the fear of success is actually just as prevalent. Mm. Once you prove that you're capable of doing something, now you know you can do it. 
and the expectation is there. You know, in, in sports, when you see somebody win a championship, well, now everyone knows that they're capable. And, and in team sports, it's a little different because you're relying on several people. But, you know, in an individual sport like golf or tennis or something like that, you know, you win Wimbledon. Well, now the expectation is that, well, well, you should win it again because we know you're capable. And a lot of people crumble under that, that fear of success because they know, OK, if I raise the bar, the bar never comes back down again. And I remember years ago working in a big box gym with with other fitness coaches who legitimately had that fear because mm. they knew if their income increased, if their revenue increased, that we would expect that of them because we knew they could do it. And they would just dumb themselves back down. And I'm not being derogatory about those people, but, you know, they would bring themselves back down to that mediocre level where they were just average and could just kind of fly under the radar. You know, they weren't bad employees. They would they would do their job and do it well, but they had no desire to keep pushing the envelope yeah. because they they truly feared what that would be like. And and now looking looking where I am now and looking back, I think a lot of it is the fear of who you have to become to be that successful person. You know, we have to change. We have to evolve. We have to think differently. We have to behave differently. We have to have a different type of routine. And if we're not willing to embrace that fact and know that there's more struggle coming our way, but that struggle is going to benefit us in the long haul, then everyone, people will just shrink back. They'll go right back to what mm. made them comfortable and stay there. And it's, it's kind of a, it's a weird phenomenon. You know, I, I guess, again, if you look back evolutionarily, um, you know, we wanted to be comfortable, you know, mm. go kill a woolly mammoth. You don't have to kill a woolly mammoth every single day. That thing will last for a while, yeah. but you know, it's, that's not the world we live in anymore. No. Well, you know, we talk about being getting comfortable and, and Ed Milet talks about a thermostat, like on the wall, like your thermostat yeah. is set at 72 and now you're comfortable. And, and when you get around elite people, people have pushed themselves. The thermostat set at like 85, so they're always playing at that level, and that's where they expect you to be. And that, that's only a good thing, and that's why I joined this group as well, because I, I talk to people, and it just blows my mind. They're like, yeah, we had a bad month last m month, and it was like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, in a month? I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? They're like, nah, it's a bad month. I'm like, holy cow. So I'm just trying to get uh, get into that level, get around those people, I mean, it is intimidating, but it, it, it's what I need. I need I need to get around people like that in order to bring me up and set my goal, set my standard at a higher level and not come back down to this. If I'm coming back down to this level, then I'm, 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 a, I'm subpar. I'm not, I'm not, you know, what I'm capable of doing. And yeah. there's always going to be a struggle. And I, and I think if we reflect back to those times in our lives where we felt scared, we felt fearful of taking the next leap, whatever it may be, whether it was in a relationship or a business or whatever, whatever realm of life. If, if we look back, most of the time we can see how we grew because of it. So we start to establish this pattern of like, oh man, I was so scared to go start my own business. I was scared to leave my comfortable job. I was scared to ask the girl to marry me. And yet over and over and over again, we see the results of it. And most of the time they're, uh, you know, I hope for me anyway, most of the time they're positive. And, and so it, it really, is, I, I love the, the human mind is such a vast, weird, complex thing. Yeah, right? yeah. And so we can have this track record and we can see all this success. And then the very next thing that comes along, that's fearful. What do we do? Like our instinct goes, ah, and you want to like go hide under the covers and, you know, avoid it. And it, it just it baffles me and I'm and I'm completely still guilty of it. But, you know, I, I've talked to quite a few, you know, the newer people that are in the execs program, the apex program that we're talking about. And it's the same. It's the same verbiage. Oh, man. You know, this is a big commitment. This is a scary leap. I don't know. I don't know if I belong. I'm going to do it anyway. And every single person who shows up and does the work benefits like it's not even close. So it, it's, again, it's funny to, to think, why do we still have that type of fear when we have so many examples personally and around us 
to show us otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just a human uh, thing where you just get comfortable, you know, and, and a lot of people ex- build these huge businesses and then they just get to a certain point and then they just try to coast. And, and then usually they just <laughs> end up losing everything, you know, or, or just coming, de- you know, losing a lot of it and going, what the hell has just happened? I'm like, <laughs> and then I had uh, Jesse Lee on, we just published it today, but she was like, you got to keep evolving and keep uh, reinventing yourself, you know, because everything's not going to stay static, not going to stay the same. There's a lot of companies out there that, don't want to do deal with social media and guess what a lot of them are going out of business right yeah. because the big the box stores like you're talking about um the JC Penny the Sears right these are huge like monsters in the past and they just got stuck there and then they had the management that didn't want to move into the new social media realm <clears throat> the online realm and they're getting crushed and and they're closing stores and going out of business you know yeah. Yeah. You know, so much of that all comes back to, you just mentioned it, you know, evolving personally. And if every, you know, my utopia world here, if every human being actually woke up every day thinking, how can I just be a little bit better? Then everything would be better and everything would progress and everyone would evolve and businesses would evolve and the world would solve all these problems that, you know, have been quote unquote unsolvable for years we can solve all those things. The problem is there's just not enough people out there willing to take that risk and go for it. So, you know, we get in this realm where it seems like for you and I, it seems like everyone around us is doing all this big stuff and having these huge successes, but we're a tiny, tiny percentage of the population. You know, if you look at like fitness stats, I mean, 70% of America is overweight or obese. So I look around, I look around and I see a whole lot of fit human beings in my circle of people. Right. But I have to remind myself that's not represent, you know, that's (laughs) not representative of the population as a whole by, by any stretch of the imagination. It's a horrible thing. And, you know, everybody talks about conspiracy theory, but they're keeping America obese and they're developing problems. And then the drug companies are coming in and giving them medication and it's a vicious cycle. And that's what it is. And people say, no, you can't say that. Oh, you're you're like a racist or something against fat people. <laughs> like, no, I'm not. I'm like, go for a walk. Oh, let me take this pill for my cholesterol. I'm like, stop eating the freaking pizza. Okay? Right. Put right. the eclair down and step away from the all you can eat food bar, okay? You know? Get away from that stuff. Go for a walk. You can control your your cholesterol, all right? And and a lot of people even take this medicine. My uncle said it once. He's like, yeah, I can take this medicine now and I can eat whatever the hell I want. I'm like, no, you can't. (laughs) Don't take that medicine. It's going to cause another problem within you and you're going to have to take another medication for that. And, and, and I believe it's, 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 I, to me, I see it and I know it's there and it's just America is, and then they have supersized things, you know, like in, in McDonald's, like, you know, drinking a, a, a large soda is, that's bad. And then they'd say, well, we'll take a gallon, you know, <laughs> and you can fill it up like for like, to fill for it up for, for 59 cents. You can fill it again. I'm like, what do you need two gallons of soda for? It's like ridiculous. And all that sugar and it just converts to fat. But anyway, this is, <laughs> I love it. I love uh, it. but it's horrible. And, 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 you know, people are not fit. And I, I've done the 75 hard. Have you done the 75 hard uh, program or? Yeah, a couple times. Oh, yeah, I, I did it twice as well. And it gives you such clarity, and I feel great. You know, I feel fantastic. Uh, before that, it was just terrible. But I think yeah, in the pandemic, too, uh, which is another topic which I'm going to explore with. <laughs> I have Sean Whalen after this. Actually, we're going to interview him, and I'm just going to throw it out there and see what he says, you know. but <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> what 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 is your, um you know, I mean, perception on that? Because a lot of people were driven inside – and they kind of became like lethargic and, and their moods went down. And, and you know, I think f- physical fitness and getting moving is, is also great for your mood, right? And, oh, and, and it releases a whole bunch of chemicals. Like, what do you think about all that? You know, I, again, very fortunate to be in Texas when all this went down. Um, I, I, I shut my gym down for about six weeks. And oh, yeah. I, honestly, 
I wasn't even really fully shut down. Um, a couple of us would still go meet up there and, and work out every day. You know, I, I used that time to work on my business. I used that time to work on myself. I just got married. I literally got married like a month before the world shut down. Wow. And, you know, so now I'm, I'm, I'm in the house with my wife and she's like, you like plotted this out very well. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I, I love spending time with her. And, uh, you know, we just kept plugging along and adapting and solving problems. And, you know, out of it for me, another business was born where I started coaching other fitness coaches. My business partner, uh, Jonathan Loudermilk, who's also in Apex with us, oh. you know, we, we formed a partnership to help other coaches take their business online because so many of them had no clue. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to do it. They weren't ready for it at mm -hmm. all. And it's something that I had been doing for years before that. So, you know, we just look for opportunity to help people and I was still working out. I was still going out like, you know, I, it's a virus and, and people can say what they want, but I'm not going to live hiding from something that I can't see. I, I'm not denying it doesn't exist. I mean, obviously people died, people get sick. I've had several clients that have come down with it. They're totally fine now. Yeah. You know, if, if we didn't know that it existed, would we have known? And that's the question that I ask, because a lot of my clients that got it, they felt bad for a couple of days, kind of like the flu. And, you know, they took some fluids, got some rest and, you know, a week or so they were back in the gym. So I, you know, I don't know, but I, I can't, I can't imagine looking back over the last, what, 14 months now, right. you know, we're, we're filming this May of May of 2021. So the last 14 months being sheltered. Like I've had so many great experiences and places my wife and I have gone and things that we've done and things we've done with friends. I cannot imagine hiding in my house for the last 14 months, waiting for some magical thing to happen, like the government going, okay, you can go out now. What the hell mm. with that? <laughs> like, you know, go live your life. You know, no, if this was my last day, but like, I, you know, I don't want to know that I, I lived my last year of my life, you know, hiding. That sounds terrible. And, uh, I don't, you know, we, we could go on the soapbox here for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can go for a long time. Yeah. But <clears throat> I mean, it's unfortunate and um, it, it probably affected a lot of people's health as well. And, and I would think that, you know, a better way to handle a pandemic is to get your immune system in better order and, and go to the gym. And that, that's what I was shocked is like a lot of these gyms, a lot of these people were shutting gyms down uh, where they should really should be uh, promoting getting into the gym and then uh, boosting your immunity. I mean, that's a great yeah. way. If you don't want to get sick, you got to get, get your immunity up, you know, and, and by staying inside, watching Netflix, drinking and putting a mask on and inhaling your own CO2, I don't know. That just doesn't seem, it seems like an opposite way of, of handling something, you know? It, it absolutely baffles me that at no point was any of that narrative about taking care of yourself. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, like you said, wearing a mask, washing your hands, using hand sanitizer, wear some gloves, like all these things to quote unquote protect you. But nobody talked about, Hey, maybe this is the wake up call that we all need to start taking better care of our own personal health because oh, yeah. the statistics show everyone who really suffered from this had what 2.3 core morbidities. Most of them, you know, uh, uh, like 79% of them of, of deaths, those people were obese. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't take, you know, as my friend, Brian McKittrick says, it ain't rocket surgery. You know, it, it doesn't <laughs> like, you don't have to think long and hard to figure out why certain people really suffered from this and why other people, it was just a blip on their radar and then they were back to normal again. So, you know, I, I really hope that in the, in the aftermath of this as as more of the country starts to open up that people really take stock in this and look a at what all these lockdowns really did, which as you mentioned, affected mental health greatly, you know, suicide rates up domestic violence up, you know, even I, I, I've read some stats about crime being up because people aren't working. They didn't have money. They're 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 on their you know, they're resorting to violence and crime oh, to get you. what they need. They don't they're not violent people, 
but you know, we'll, we'll do a lot of things to help feed our family and, and keep the lights on. So, yeah. you know, hopefully, you know, again, my utopia world here, hopefully we can learn from this and if, and when this happens again, that we take a better approach and that we actually think about what we're doing instead of this big knee jerk reaction of just shut it all down and then keep it shut down until big brother says to open it back up again. You know, that's, it's a horrible thing. And, and I'm, and you're right. I mean, a lot of the people that uh, were affected poorly were obese and there were a lot of elderly people that, um, you know, it affected uh, horribly. And I think those people, the elderly people should, um, you know, wear masks and maybe not go out or, you know, we should stay away from them because I don't want to get them sick. Um, but the obese people should take a, a lesson from this and, and, you know, really look at their lives and, and get their, get their stuff in order, you know, yep. because th- we're supposed to get stronger against like an enemy, right? But it, not a weaker, we have to stand up as people. That's how we survived as a human race. And, and, and all this was, was like, all right, we'll go inside and wear a mask. <laughs> and here's some unemployment money to just stay inside. It's like it doesn't make sense. There's something going on. But I, I, I then they call me a conspiracy theorist, and then they ban me. So I'm gonna, they're going to kick me off iTunes probably soon. We we can put our tinfoil hats on and jam out. It's all good. I think we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna. I, I want to have like an apex. Maybe we should just do like a like you can talk about health. I'll talk about fear. We'll do like a tour, a nationwide tour. It. We'll get everybody together. <laughs> <laughs> that would be freaking awesome. I'll I'll do it. I'll organize it. Here we go. Next meeting. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Well, you know, I wanted to uh, have you on, and um, you know, any any parting words from uh, for for you in terms of uh, people handling their fear, especially when it comes to you know health and fitness, and and then maybe you can let us know where they can find you to get some more information on what you're doing. Yeah, you know, I, I think people just have to understand that at the end of the day we are all going to die. You know, that's the reality of it. And, you know, we can use that to be fearful or we can use it to thrive. And I got into stoicism a a few years ago and Mm. and that, that mantra is so present of, you know, any day can be your last. And so if it is, I want it to be a good one. You know, I want to spread joy in the world. I want to put a smile on people's faces. I want to make sure that I tell people I love them. So, you know, that, that to me is my driving force. And I just encourage anyone listening to this to really think about, you know, what's your purpose in life? Why are you here? Because one day you won't be, and you have the choice to spend those days dreading your last, or, you know, you, you thrive and you smile and you serve your purpose and you serve it well and you live a good life. And, and to me, that's, that's what all this is all about. At the end of the day, it's, it's making the most of our time here and not succumbing to those false fears that so many of us, you know, get, get sucked into because the world tries to bring you down and, and dim your own light. So that's my, uh, that's my little spiel there. Um, If anyone wants to follow me, on Instagram, my handle is the Fitness Ninja. If you look me up on Facebook, just type in my name, Mark Zamanoff. You'll find me. I have the Make America Fit Again group on Facebook as well, where we have fitness memes and shenanigans and all that good stuff. And uh, I have I actually have two podcasts now. I have wow. the Real Talk with Real Fit Pros podcast and the Make Good Choices podcast. And finally, if you would like to pick up a copy of my Amazon best-selling book, wow. Make Good Choices, you can head on over to Amazon, type in Make Good Choices or my name, and it'll pop up for you. Wow, wow. A lot of stuff. That's awesome. Well, I'm, <laughs> it I'm, sounds I'm, like a lot when I say it out loud. I'm like, oh, that is a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a lot, and, I, and it's great. It's good to know you, and you're, you're doing great things, and I'm glad I'm surrounding myself with people like you and, you know, um, got to get people back into the gym get get them healthy you know that's the way but i i appreciate you being on again and uh we're we're going to talk to you soon thank you so much michael appreciate it all right thank you yeah that was mark zalmanoff and he's an apex executives coach he's also a founder of mark z fitness and nutrition he has a gym in uh, frisco texas and um, he has a couple podcasts too um, and we were talking about, um, 
you know, the pandemic and also people, um, you know, getting back into the gym, you know, and taking care of themselves. And uh, he, he's a coach and he helps people overcome their fear. And um, I mean, just a simple thing is, you know, those those boxes that you jump onto. You know, he's a coach um, for all kinds of uh, fitness and, you know, uh, nutrition and getting your your body in order, which is key, important. You know, if you want to do anything, if you want to move forward uh, in life, you got to get your health in order, you know, um, and then the rest of it will come. Um, but uh, I feel a whole a whole lot better. I keep talking about 75 hard, but any program, just get on a program, get into the gym, move, just keep moving. You know, if you if you have fear, thinking about something like before, I was freaking out. I said I could go for a walk, so I went out for a walk, thirty minutes. I'm good. I'm back. Here we go. Boom. Let's do a podcast. So you just got to remove yourself sometimes from that 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 uh, negative energy and and get you know recharged. You know, go out, get some nature, a quick walk, like half hour walk, thirty minute walk. Boom. You you'll be right back to normal. But I appreciate Mark. And I appreciate you for uh, tuning in. If you, if you like our podcast, you like our guests, please go on iTunes or whatever you're listening to. Give us a rating and review. Click on those five stars. Everything is great. And, you know, subscribe to this podcast. So it'll come to you automatically. Tell, tell friends about it. Uh, if I can help one person, I'm okay. I want to help millions, though. We're going for millions. I used to say thousands, but I'm thinking bigger. Okay, that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will talk to you next time. Take care.